Welcome to the Steve and Bobby Show. My name is Steve Williams, and of course, I'm here with Bobby Bleatu every week as we do it here at the Mad Talk TV studios in the central part of California. That's right. <laughs> so anyway, we want to talk about, we're going to talk about, you know, the, the election now is over, pretty much. Okay, it's pretty much over. And um, now it's, we're, we're, Joe Biden is on this, getting his cabinet filled. Right. And there's a lot of positions that are out there that needs to get filled. Um, there's a lot of names being floated out there. I don't know if you want to go into the video first, because we can go into the video yeah, and then see we can, what's going let's on. Let's do that. Let's go to the video first, and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Now that the victory speech has been given, the people of this nation have spoken. The transition begins at Transition 46, launching on Twitter. But who will be in President-elect Joe Biden's cabinet, and how will federal agencies change? But you should know that President-elect Joe Biden is not beginning this process of who may be in his cabinet. He's actually had a transition team for months who have already been vetting potential prospects. Senator Chris Coons of Delaware has been mentioned as a possible Secretary of State, as has former National Security Advisor Susan Rice. Whoever is in charge would be tasked with rebuilding relationships with other countries and international organizations. They would be involved in rejoining the Paris Climate Agreement and the World Health Organization. Over at the Department of Justice, Senator Doug Jones of Alabama or DNC Chair Tom Perez could be Attorney General, a post that will address police reform and this mission from the president-elect. And root out systemic racism in this country. Senator Elizabeth Warren has been floated as a possible Treasury Secretary, a department that will determine the future COVID economic relief payments and whether taxes should be increased on corporations and those making over 400000 Of course, there will be no greater challenge than dealing with this pandemic, which is why New Mexico Governor Michelle Luan Grisham could be the next Health and Human Services Secretary. She used to be in charge of health agencies before entering politics and would be part of a discussion around a national mask mandate. Because of how divided this country is, though, look for possible Republicans to be considered for top jobs, too. Former Ohio Governor John Kasich is a contender, as is former Arizona Senator Jeff Flake. I think you cut it off on Jeff Flake. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Flake? Kasich? Hey, what? You know what? <laughs> Biden has always worked what? across the aisle. He has a plan. They have a plan there to show everyone that we're going to work together. We yeah. got to be united, right? I mean, that, that, there's a there's a, a key component in bringing our country together. You can see that it was completely divided in a half. It wasn't in, in the vote. It wasn't one way, all the way heavy one way, or all the way heavy the other way. Um, I mean, electoral college, it was heavy one way over the other. But the truth is, in popular vote and whatever you know, everyone voting, you can see there is a divide. And there are things that people care about and things that, you know, we care about that a whole bunch of other folks don't care about. Mm -hmm. So they need to be able to hear and listen and trust the people who are there in the cabinet, who are their elected leaders. And we got we just got to get to it. We, you know, when you look at that there, what is like the most important um, appointments that he can make or are any of them really truly important um, to, 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 you know, have the right people in place? I think, especially when you're talking about uh, appointees, it, it has me kind of worried because, in you know, if you if he picks like he was looking at Gish, uh, the New Mexico governor, got to fill that spot. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Warren, sitting senator, got to fill that spot. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Warren, I'm not too worried about, but New Mexico's had Republican governors, so that that you know, even though it's a deep, it is a blue state. Um, I'm more worried about filling those spots. It, Warren. Uh, Elizabeth Warren is actually a beautiful pick for, because re if you remember, Obama tried to do that and couldn't get it passed through the Senate, and it's almost the same Senate. <laughs> the Senate has not, has not moved too much. You right. know, there's some moderates that are gone. It's actually meant a little bit more to the right. So it's going to be really hard to get her confirmed. And then you got, uh, the, the one that they didn't, they didn't mention was, um, I know there was talk for um, uh, Bernie Sanders in the labor that would be really, really, really good for him. I think he, that would be an excellent spot. And that's another to replace? Yeah, I know, another senator. <laughs> but Vermont, mm -hmm. that's an easy one to replace, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Vermont's a deep blue state. So um, I'm just worried about, of all of those, Susan Rice would be good. I mean, they're going to demonize her like they always done. They just think she's, she's the got Antichrist. the record. She's got the experience. But she and has decisions there. all the credentials. Right. And I think she's uh, she's over there with um, the other Rice, uh, not not uh, what, uh, for the Bush administration. 
Condoleezza Rice mm -hmm. at Stanford. I think she's a professor out there as well. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I saw some stuff, um, and I don't remember the names, but of people who were appointed for our military, like um, if it was defense, a cabinet, mm -hmm. but... Department of Defense, uh, Right, like we're having positions in which, you know, we're anti-war, right? We're, oh, yeah. We're, but these folks have been, like, pro-war. These folks have been funded by, mm. um, like, is it Blackwater, by oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, North, Northrop and... Yeah. Uh, or defense contractors, yeah. uh, and so they've been part that's been funded by companies that uh, will profit Burton. from war, yeah. right? And so they're gonna he's gonna get picked apart on a lot of these things. And you actually can look when you look at that. Oh, you're saying Biden's Biden? Biden will get picked picking? apart from the yeah these people who he's starting to choose, oh. and you know, oh. you know there was like a lot of folks who who we are in, in tune with. Uh, are starting to pick be, apart at, at, yeah. at, you know, who he's choosing. I mean, you can really see how middle of the line road he is. Yeah. He's not this socialist. He's yeah. not this person that really wants universal health care. I mean, yeah. he's really, really in the middle. I mean, he's... He's an 80s he's, Republican. He's, he's, yeah, he's right there. <laughs> and we said we're going to be picking on him. Let, let him get elected yeah, first. <laughs> let him well, get I'm, in I'm there not, officially. I, it's not but, that it's a bad thing, but, you but, know, there's uh, a lot of moderate... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it took a lot of moderates to put him in there. Right, but, you know, it's that <laughs> moderate stance, and I'm going to say it, that... that has been yeah. the reason why we can't get things done. Yeah. You can say all you want to stop yeah. systemic racism, yeah. but you got to put the stuff out there that's yeah. going to understand. I mean, you, Very true. You, you talk about systemic racism. Look at this cabinet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, look, look at the people that they, they, they all brought up right there. Yeah. Is that a group that you look at can actually handle this? Because these are people who are going to be working in the system mm -hmm. in different areas. Remember, system, systemic racism isn't like just police issue. Yeah. It's an issue all, all around the board, yeah, right? Yeah. And so that, that's, that's, that's very important that you have people in play that agree with you. Yeah. And if they agree with you, and then the policies and the, the movements they make forward in their departments will fall in tune with getting rid of systemic racism. Right? There's so many different things. I mean, having Elizabeth Warren in there to, to work on, uh, you know, like right now saying COVID, the COVID-19 stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's great to want to, to help a lot of folks and identify where the money can come from, uh, identify what taxes have to happen, because she, we always said it, she really understands Wall Street. Mm -hmm. She really understands the loopholes that she these does. people take. So she should be able to close those loopholes mm -hmm. to find the funding to do what we need to do for our country. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you, and then even if they were in those positions, you know, will Biden give her the leash to do it? You know, because don't forget, Biden is from Delaware, which is a huge banking state. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's a banking state is because of Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden has loosened a lot of bank restrictions. And that's why, you know, you know, Delaware is a huge. I mean, if you look in your back, of your credit cards, all of them are based in Delaware or North Dakota. Those are the two states that they're from. And it's because of the loose, you know, very loose. Um, banking regulations that are in those states. So will, if he were to pick someone like Elizabeth Warren, put Elizabeth Warren in, in a position uh, for the financial sector, it, will she have the leash to do what she needs to do to make that happen? I guess those are the other things. And, and this is part of um, us as the voters, right? We, we, you know, I always say this, I say this in almost everything we do is, we don't let loose on our politicians once they're voted in. We need to let them know as to the reasons why we voted for them and what they were campaigning on, right? It's, I always use the term that we, we got to lean on them, right? You got to lean on them. I'm not an anti-Biden or not, not, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about, hey, look, we put you there. This is what we need at least. You need to help those first that voted for you. And then we need to look at the bigger picture, right? We need to repair what basically Trump has destroyed. Right, especially when you're talking about land management, the selling off of almost I don't know how many millions of acres of U.S. land to oil drilling companies and fracking companies. Biden has a lot he's got to do. He just has to put the right people in the positions to ensure that his initiatives and the initiatives of those who put him in office get fulfilled. That's right. It. Well, I mean, it comes down to this, guys. When Trump got elected. Look, we know in America we are tired of the dog and pony show that has been going on. Mm -hmm. Elected officials get in and say they're going to do all these things, and you never get to see the efforts to doing those. We have some good politicians in there that are, are working hard and doing what they said they do that didn't promise the world. But in, in, in politics and running for president, they're going to be promising a lot of stuff. And you, you know what, Biden, you got in for my minority vote. 
You got in from that African-American vote. You got in apologizing for, you know, the crime bill and all those other things that you did, and you're going to turn it around. You're saying that you're going to do this. You need to work on that. At the same time, we talk about COVID. You hit Trump and Trump over and over again on COVID. You need to do something on COVID. There's a lot of other things mm -hmm. that you have to do. But those are two promises that were out there loud and clear that you must address and take care of and, and work your magic that you do, working across the aisles to get these people to do things, okay? No excuses. We didn't give Trump any excuses. We're not going to give you any excuses, right? I don't want to hear, oh, the Republicans stopped me. I don't think you'll do that. But if you do, you should have been better than that. You should have got the Republicans to come on your side, just like Trump should have worked with the Democrats to come on his side. He didn't do that. He created a huge divide. You said you were going to unite us. I want to see it. And we need to see, you know, stuff come out, right? We need to see things that can happen. And, you know, with everything that he promised and, and working, you know, um, uh, you know, to rid uh, racism from our system, do you think it's possible that he will be able to even make any incremental progress forward? Uh, you know? Well, I mean, really the only power that a president has is the ability to put people into these departments as department heads and elected officials and, and um, appointed officials by him to ensure that that happens, right? The talent's out there. The talent's out there to at least start repairing. We, we're a damaged country. We're, we are damaged goods right now, no doubt. Okay, but there's ways to fix it. The talent's out there. There's talent all over the place out there that's willing to fix these things. There's people all over the place. Um, that are able to get into these positions and fix some of these problems that we have. Because that's really all he can do, right? He, he himself can't really do anything. He's the President of the United States. He has to uh, appoint somebody into these departments to ensure that that happens. So the real question is, does he have the ability and the guts and the intestinal fortitude to put the right individuals in the right places in some of these departments and appoint the individuals, even if it's going to be controversial, right? I saw Obama back off on, a lot, on some of his appointments, especially Van Jones and some of these issues. When he was president, he backed off. As you've seen, Donald Trump backed off on nobody. Very few. Some that were overtly racist that was just like, oh, yeah, that guy's, yeah, he's racist. But some of them that were just a little amount racist or a little whatever, he just let them go through. I mean, some of these judges he's putting through is ridiculous. He, I mean, it, he... It's, it's almost like you got this blue, blown up house. It's all over the place, and you're just looking at it. Biden's just like here looking at it. Oh, he's got to he, gotta figure out how the foundation first, right? Can't put the wiring in, can't put nothing in first. You got to put the foundation, lay the cement down. You got to redo this junk. Right. Really. Right. And you got to have that vision up. and plan. So the everyone, vision. not just everyone you appoint, will do it. Uh, yeah. or, or, uh, we'll say. Will say what they need to say to get to get appointed, to get point, yeah. but he's got to be able to watch and make sure that they're doing what he says. Yeah. And then when something comes out that he hears of it, stand up for it, yeah. advocate it. Don't hide behind something, you know. Don't ignore it. Address the situation because when you do that, it gives power to those folks in those departments mm -hmm. to continually move forward. Because when you are pushing for change, I'm going to tell you, it's very hard to speak up. Yeah, it is very hard to stand against how we've said in the past, like you know, stand, you know, the man, the man, right? Mm -hmm. It's hard to stand up against it. It is. It takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of passion, you know, and, you know, a lot of, is on, a lot of it goes on the line. You have to give them the courage to do so. So it's not just appointing, but it's also motivating and speaking your mind and being passionate and continuing that same narrative so that the people in these departments can continue moving forward, knowing what that plan is, knowing that they won't get stabbed in the back when they try to make these proper changes to actually happen. Yeah. You know, and convince Congress, because that's another group that he works with, to convince Congress, both House and Senate, these are the plans that we want to go through. Write something up. Tell me what your people, what your constituents think. How can we get there to make these things happen, mm -hmm. right? And then all the things that I talked about, you know, I didn't talk about climate change. He made a lot of promises about climate change <laughs> yeah, he did. that he's got to be able to do. So yeah. he's going to stand up against these oil companies. He's going to stand up against these folks, right? He's going to slow down the fracking, right? Mm -hmm. he's, you know, that has to come through. And he's got four years, right? And so basically, you need to get the start, Biden, in the next two years on all of these things that you promised. You got two years to do it, to start it, and then kind of, you know, a third year to complete it or look finished and it's on its progress because it's re-election time. And if nothing gets done, we know Republicans getting in office. And, the, and, the, and, it, and, he, and real quick, too, if, if here, here's the thing I just read the other day, uh, yesterday, actually, that in Europe, 
Britain, sp specifically in Britain, France, Italy, and I think uh, Greece, have in 2030, that is what, nine years from now, right? Darn near nine years, because we're almost mm -hmm. in 2021. They will eliminate all gas combustion cars on their roads. They will not have one single car allowed on their roads that is made after 2030. They'll, you'll be able to have them. Right, no, no more sales of, of new No vehicles, more sales right. Right. of right. gas combustion cars in their right. country in 2030. Why are the Europeans leading this? We should be leading this. This is technology that's coming. It's actually here. I mean, I just went this past weekend to uh, Lucid Air and seen their facility and seen what they had out. I mean, I'm telling you, yeah. these cars are coming. Only privileged people can drive those cars, <laughs> I'm man. I'm just saying. I, I saw you put that out there. Like, dude, that car, like, most of America can't afford that kind of car, but dude. Just, it's a good technology. <laughs> They're going to come out with a car that's 60-some thousand, okay? They are. It's coming. A lot of people can't afford a 60,000 car. But, but um, you know, there's a lot of promises that he has to make and yeah. uh, that he has to keep and he actually cannot just speak to speak. He's got to walk the walk. He's got to make the action happen, right? And yeah. I think most people will agree. That's what a good leader does. Um, they say these things, and we have to see the fight for it. We yeah. have to see it. It can't be just a bunch of complaints that other people aren't letting them do it, all right? And, and the reason why that uh, we're not leading it is because our people don't believe in it. Yeah. That's the truth. In America, we don't believe that it's possible. Mm -hmm. Many of us do believe it's possible. Many of us don't believe it's possible. And it's so convincing as, those at first. a leader mm -hmm. to show people that we can get there, to give the confidence that we have the economic infrastructure to make this happen. Yep. That when we have this transition, people will still have food to eat. And, and we have to make, you know, it has to be proof. That's why I said the dog and pony show only goes so far to yep. get elected. Um, but now you, it's time to do the work. Uh, yeah, you got to do the work. And so we got to make that happen. And so one thing I want to bring up, because when we talk about climate change, jo joining the Paris Accord, uh, what do you think that reception is like as we go in? Will everyone oh. be clapping? Or will everyone be saying, know. we don't trust you guys? I you know what I mean? Know. Let's see actually, what his actually, reception is with everyone. I think it's a lot of clapping. I think there's a lot of I, clapping. I don't think it's that whole conversation that we've seen that yeah. happen where you know the leaders of the world are talking and laughing about our president. <laughs> They'll be like, yeah! You know? so, mean, everybody knows Joe Biden, too, by the way. He's really well liked. He's been there. I, yeah. mean, I mean, those and he's well -liked folks too. he knows, yeah. And during so, Obama's administration, he did a lot of the foreign negotiations for Obama right. because he's had already, you know, forged some of these bridges with some of these leaders, yeah. world leaders all across the world. So right. he's, he's ready. So all right. anyway, that's where we are at. I appreciate you guys for watching the Stephen Bobby Show as usual on the Matt Talk TV studios. Make sure you stay tuned for more of our content that's all over the Matt Talk TV studios. Make sure you go to their Facebook page. Like, share, tell us what we tell us what we're saying here. Maybe there's something here you don't like. Maybe something you don't agree with us. Let us yeah. know. Appreciate you guys. See you all on the other side.